All right. So in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, how to make a P8 Modrion painting. Um, you can make this any size you want. Um, you also can make it vertical or horizontal. Um, I'm going to use a, a just a letter preset horizontal, um, as we've spoken to in the previous classes and videos. Um, but again, if you want to do something that's more extreme, you can. Um, and again, I always recommend doing print quality in case it's something you ever decide to print. Um, so again, any size is fine. Um, I do tend to err error on the side of just, you know, print paper eight and a half by 11, or, you know, maybe change it around later because you can always change it later. So nothing fancy here. Preset, um, print paper. I'm going to do a horizontal piece and I'm going to hit create. Now, the most important uh, thing about doing this P8 Modrion assignment is going to be layers. We have to create some shapes first, but it's definitely going to be all about layers as to get the assignment really to uh, showcase um, its best results. Now, there are obviously more than one way to make shapes as well. Um, and there's a lot of different ways we can handle the layers. So those are the two things we have to consider when, with this assignment, besides colors and all, all and the design itself. Um, from a technical standpoint, all we have to consider is really two things. All right. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new layer here and just use it as a template because I, I like to leave my background alone if I can. Um, you know, if you want to change it into a layer itself, you can always double click on it and make it a layer. But again, with background here, it's it's kind of like a it's layer, but it's flattened, so you can't move it or do anything with this. But if you double click on it, you can convert it to a layer. And then it gives you a prompt saying layer zero and you hit OK. Now, now this this background image can be be moved like any other layer. So the the layer um, when moved as a you know it's no longer background, it will be a white piece of paper. But it'll also you allow you to move it to the point where you can see these checker boxes. And again, wherever you see these checker boxes in Photoshop, it is it means transparency. So that's the one thing you got to be careful with if you do convert it to a layer and your goal is to leave a white piece of paper um, that you might move it. Um, but if you want to, for some reason, maybe maybe play with cutting holes in it, you would have to convert it to a layer because a background you can't. Um, empty our cut pieces out of it at all. So you'd have to convert that to a layer to do that. I didn't really need to do that, but I wanted to showcase it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, and I'm going to go ahead and use this layer zero as my background. So to create a new layer, there's like four different ways, but my most preferred way is using the shortcut keys with this Control Shift N. So Control Shift N will create a new layer. So control shift N gives you a new layer. I don't bother naming my layers at the beginning because if you start doing merging operations and things like that, you will obliterate some names. So I don't really bother with it right away. So I hit OK. So this layer in the, in the preview is just a little transparent squares. You might not be able to see it on the, in the video. But I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and make my preview a little bit bigger just so you guys can see my, my stuff a little easier. I'm going to go to the uh, panel options and then make my thumbnails bigger. So if you if you like to do this again for your own, you don't have to. But if you go click on the three little lines here and go to panel options under layers, you can make the layers thumbnail or turn them off if you want. I'm going to make them really big for the video and those that might need to see them. There we go. So now you can see these these, these bigger. All right, and if you want to change it back, of course, you just go in the exact same spot. So anyway, this layer I just created, it's all transparent squares, um, checker boxes, which means transparency. If I create a shape on here, I can move it around and do all kinds of things. Um, so what we can use is the marquee tool. Now, the marquee tool is a method of making selections. But you can use it preemptively to begin the uh, process of filling which will allow you to create certain shapes. So the marquee tool is the second tool on the toolbar here. Um, the quick key for it to activate is M key. And again, wherever you see the letter, yeah, I'm hovering over right now, wherever you see the, uh, the, 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 the letter
letter, you can use the shift and the corresponding tool to actually um, switch between sub-tools of that tool. Not every tool in there can, can do this. Um, for example, in the, in the marquee, we actually have two examples of this. The only ones that have it in here, I'm clicking holding to do this, is rectangular marquee and elliptical marquee. We also have a single row and a single column, but they're not widely used enough that they even bothered to give them that little M there. So, I mean, if I click and hold on to it, I can get to this particular tool, but they're not used very often. But these two have both have M's next to it, which means I can also hit Shift M Nothing like problems to get your way going. There we go. Uh, if I can hit Shift M to toggle back and forth between these these two things. So you can see it's a rectangular marquee. Shift M, it's elliptical marquee. Rectangular, elliptical. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the rectangular marquee tool. Now this marquee tool can be used to draw rectangular shapes. If I click and hold with my left mouse or with the pen tablet, as I hold, it's making rectangular shapes. If I let go, it makes a marquee, whatever I currently had it at. And this is square-ish, but it's not a perfect square. Um, this is nothing but a selection right now. It doesn't really do anything. Um, if I had an image there, I could grab it and start moving around. There's nothing here on this layer, because I'm, again, I'm on layer zero. So this doesn't do me any, any anything by itself, but you can do a lot of other tools after this that would affect this. The one for this, this particular assignment they'll be doing probably a lot is the fill command. Now, there is a couple quick keys for fill command. Again, I'm a huge fan of my quick keys. Uh, shift backspace, I think shift F5 is one. Um, you can also go up to edit, obviously, and do fill. Shift, yep, shift F5. I use shift backspace myself. I, it's kind of uh, an older, older quick key that's been around. But uh, shift backspace uh, brings up a fill command dialog. And um, it will say here under contents, um, more than likely if this is your first time using Photoshop, it will probably say content aware, which doesn't do you any good in this particular assignment. This is this content aware is a kind of fill. It's great for uh, photography based um, editing. And we will definitely talk about this in future lectures. But you probably want either foreground and back or background or color. You can do color as well. What foreground does is it's whatever you're saying, you're going to fill with whatever is in your foreground box, which is, again, is the leftmost box, the top left box down here. Or you can switch it to background color, which will be the back, the back bottom right box here. Or if you picked color, you would just get a color picker and you can pick a color. I tend to leave mine on foreground. And again, this is your preference. You can do whatever you wish. Um, I tend to just change my foreground color and then do a fill when I want to ever uh, change it. Um, so again, if you want to not mess with your foreground background color, you can pick color. Or if you don't want to mess with your foreground color, you can have it be background color. Now these other ones, uh, they're not really useful for this one and not to blow the lecture, so we're not going to talk about these other ones as much right now. So I'm going to leave mine on foreground color. Right now my foreground color is black. So if I hit OK, and it's going to fill with black. And you can see the selection is still there as well. So marquee selections or selections in general are always a preemptive thing. It's, like, it's very typical in Photoshop to have to select something, then modify it or do something in some way. Um, so in this case, we made a selection and we filled it. Um, and you'll be doing this probably a lot um, in the early steps of, of this particular, um, you know, project exercise here. Because you need to create a few squares to get yourself going. And then after that, you can actually just duplicate them and move, you know, move them around. But you probably need to create several here to kind of get this going or explore things. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and do it again throughout all the, all the lecture. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. And remember, to deselect any selection is Control D. Um, I just undid the uh, the fill, so I undid the fill, then I hit Control D. All right. So again, uh, M key for marquee. If you're not on the elliptical marquee, you can hit Shift M or click and hold to get to the right correct one. 
and I'll let go to select it. Left click and hold in the main new paper to drag, to click and drag, uh, your whole, I'm holding down the left mouse button to drag out some sort of marquee base shape. Once you have a selection made, again, this is on layer one in my case, with nothing there, um, I can fill it by using shift backspace or I can use shift F5 or um, again, you can go up to edit and do fill to fill it. Now my, again, my preference is foreground color and whatever the color is in here will be what it will fill it with when I do that. So again, there it is. Now, if you do these on a layer and let's say, oh, I'm off a little bit or I want to change it or maybe I want to cut a hole in this or something, um, you can do that. In fact, it's the exact same tool. So if I hit Control D here to deselect this because I don't want to do it this one and come back in to make another selection with the marquee tool, just again with the, 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 the rectangular marquee tool and drag a box here and, and I'm being very um, liberal, getting huge uh, selections made and then hitting backspace, I can delete. So backspace by itself is just delete. Where shift backspace is fill. It's probably why I use back, shift backspace so much. You might fill. But backspace by itself is just straight up delete. And you can see I can delete that, that piece. And again, it's very layer dependent. So you got to make sure you're always double checking that you're on the correct layer. And again, that's the most common mistake that you guys can make. So if you see something's not working, double check you're on the right layer. Another thing is if something's not working, um, just, just another tip, uh, very pop, a very popular mistake is you make a really small selection. You don't know you have that select. I'm trying to do it and I can't. I made one up here and I'm like, oh, I, I'm trying to do something over here and I can't. Try hitting control D and doing, then going back to do whatever you're doing. Uh, so again, sometimes you make an accidental selection that you don't mean to and you don't know where it is. And you, technically you can hide selections too. So just to add even more confusion to the list. Um, so uh, two common mistakes in this in, in this particular project or begin, beginning projects like this is hit Control D, which is deselect. And again, you can go to selection if you like menus better. Select, deselect. And double check that you're actually on the correct layer. Okay. Now, um, if you're trying to get perfect squares, you can sit here and probably, you know, you know, pull your, your you know, your hair out um, trying to get them. So I just drew a selection and hit delete, get rid of them. Another way of making, getting rid of stuff. Um, but you can use the marquee tools to make perfect um, squares or circles. Now, the way to do this, there's actually a few ways of doing this, but it, the most common way is you hold down shift and click and drag on this. So I've deselected everything just to kind of show this again. If I hold down shift and drag, it's drawing from corner to corner. And when I draw, it's only making perfect squares. And you guys kind of kind of see the preview of the dimensions if that matters to you. My dimensions are currently set in pixels, so it's kind of set in the pixels. But it's making a perfect square as I go. So if you want a perfect square, you can totally do that. And again, if I want to fill it, Shift backspace. There you go. So you can see that. Control D. Now the great thing is if you if you have a, 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 a some pixels, some painted pixels, on its own layer, you can move this around. Now it, there's a couple things that you probably want to do is if you again if you want to move the entire layer, make sure you don't have anything selected. You can move it with a selection, but generally that's not, not most people's intention. If, they're, if they put it on a layer and it's just like a small element, generally you're just going to deselect and move the entire layer. So again, make sure you deselect. That's, that's like I said, that's one of the number one um, uh, catches that catch a lot of people off guard in, in Photoshop is not having something properly selected, which not, I don't think it's a problem in this one or not deselecting, and that's the one I think a lot of people are going to have a problem with in this particular project. So make sure you control D, deselect, unless you absolutely need that selection, control D to deselect. Once you, you know, you have it deselected, again, you can go back to the move tools. So right now we're just taking these first two tools, 
And the, the first tool is V key is, is move. I can move this around. You can see there's my little square. I can completely move this around and, and so on. Now you can say, well, you know what? It's a perfect square, but I really want it to be a different size. Now, do I need to go back in there and use the marquee tool and, you know, or maybe just try again, or like, like you showed earlier, just shave some off, but then it won't be a perfect square anymore. Um, yes, and th those definitely are ways you can do it, but you would have struggle with maintaining it being a perfect square. Um, so what I recommend at this point is if you need to make the square bigger or smaller, is that you you use the transform tool, which we haven't talked about at all. So um, at least not yet. So the transform tool allows you to transform a selection or a whole layer if you don't have a selection made um, by using um, transform tools, which are very similar to like a lot of programs that where it's just anchored around the edges. So if I hit Control T, for example, again, I, lo I love my quick keys. Control T um, here, Control T um, will bring up the transform um, box and it might be hard to see on this one. You know what, let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and, um, let me go ahead and fortunately the share quick key now. Um, uh, let me go ahead and change the color of this to, uh, to denote this a little bit better for you guys. So you might be able, cause you might not be able to see it too well. I hit Control T. You can see the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, bars or squares here, or, or, you know, kind of like a guiding box. This is a bounding box that you can drag these corners and uh, make this bigger. I accidentally tilted it a little bit. You have to do this back. All right, there we go. So you can um, use Control T. I have to go back with just that one. Uh, you can use Control T to transform this. Now, this is a destructive process when you're working with um, just painted pixels, which is what I've done. I'm just working with painted pixels here. So if I drag this too big and then hit return, it's going to look a little blurry if it's something. Um, they did a good job on this, but if it's something like more complicated, it's going to look blurry. Um, on simple squares and things, it might be fine, but uh, dragging things bigger, like so let's say it's a photograph of a person, is it, or if you go from something really, really small, so I, if I go back and forth, I'm just control T, enter, control T, make it bigger, and you can see it's starting to break up. I would avoid this obviously for this assignment. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Go back to where it was. Again, Control Z to undo, undo, undo. So again, um, try to avoid this. Um, generally, it's it, Photoshop is because it's destructive. It's better. You, you can always get away with downsizing something, but sizing something up bigger is a problem. Um, just it's kind of a, one of its weaknesses. There are vector shapes that we could be using to make this assignment. Perhaps some of you have already come down and found them. Um, and you are more than welcome to use those. Those do not suffer from this problem. However, I do want you, I ideally would like you guys to get more practice with the non-vector shapes on this one because vector shapes in introduce a whole new slew of other things that you need to do uh, that might cause problems for you. So again, I'm sticking to the marquee tool. Um, again, not only because it just, there's other problems that, that could come arise from the, the shapes one. So if you know Photoshop well enough that you can do that, then feel free. But I advise you to stay away from them as you if you're brand new to Photoshop and you're learning this for the first time. Plus, this will help you um, down the road when we get to more like image editing, being comfortable with the trans um, sorry, the, the the marquee tool. Okay, so again, you can make selections with the marquee tool. If you've already made a shape and you want to edit it after the fact, you, again, Control T is the transform. And this will let you scale things up or down by dragging any one of these corners, and clicking and holding, and making them bigger. Um, if you, for some reason, if you need to or want to, if you want to distort it non-uniformly, you can hold down Shift and grab one of these other edges. And you can 
uh, distort this non-uniformly. So let's say if I wanted to turn this black square into my lines instead, I can do that. I can just grab, hold down shift and drag these up. And Photoshop will try to auto um, snap, as you can see it might be doing there. Um, if it doesn't, that's okay. You can, you, you're more than welcome to drag things past the border of the image. Photoshop will keep this in memory. So this is fine, it won't, it won't hurt anything, and it will even keep it in memory unless you crop this, which means if you need to move it again later, it has it still there, it's just kind of hidden. Um, so again, if I hit enter, that, we have a line. Now, the other thing you can do, I'm gonna undo this. The other thing you can do with Control T, of course, is I'm gonna go back to something that was not a square. The other thing you can do with Control T is if you hover your mouse right outside, not one of these squares, but outside, and it doesn't matter which one, but as long as you can hover, you know, near the object outside, it, it looks like a little, you know, little, you know, curvy arrows instead of the the, the straight arrows going diagonally. The curvy arrows denote rotation. So if I want to rotate this, it's what I accidentally did at the very beginning of when I was messing with the squares. Um, you can rotate this, and then right now it's set to free rotation, meaning it's just kind of randomly going. And you can also set this to snap, and I think the default snap is 15 degrees. Um, and so to do that is you hold down shift while you're rotating. Hold on shift, yep, it is 15 degrees. Hold down shift, you can see I can snap it. Or if you need some, if you need more precision than that, you can come up here and type the actual rotation in the properties bar right here. So we talked about the properties bar, how the property bar is always context sensitive to based on whatever tools that you are messing with. And in this case, if I'm on the transform, this icon right here, the angular icon is showing your rotation uh, values right there. So you can see, you can do that. And also, even bonus, as you saw there, if you left click and hold anywhere on the object, um, while you're in transform mode, it automatically activates, it acts as a, a move tool. So you can see how there's lots of possibilities here that you can do already. Um, is grab, dragging the corners, you can scale uniformly, adding shift to that, you can scale non-uniformly, we can rotate, and we can move. And again, to rotate is to just move the, move the, the mouse outside a little bit more, we'll take the curvy lines. And to move is just hover the mouse inside the object anywhere, start clicking and holding, and you can rotate and uh, move, sorry, move in, in there, move the object around. Now, again, one last thing just to kind of beat this over, you know, you know, um, you know, into, into submission here with the lots of different uh, quick keys here is if I don't have anything selected, it's going to transform the entire layer. If for some reason I have a selection though, it's only gonna transform that selection. So it's important to always pay attention to your selections and your layers in Photoshop. It's, it's pretty crucial actually. So if I start, you know, I draw a selection out here and start rotating this, it's gonna cut it, it's gonna chop it up. And maybe that's what you want and that's fine. Um, just gotta be aware of that. So maybe I'm gonna chop this piece off and move it over here and then, um, and then hit enter to, to, uh, to, to, to make that piece, you see it's still selected, control D to deselect, and there you go, I have this, I don't know, this kind of funky looking Y here. Um, you just have to be consciously aware of what you have selected, and again, if you have nothing selected, it defaults to the layer, the whole layer when you, when you do something. And um, one last quick key for you guys, well, I lie, there's lots of quick keys. Control A is to select everything. So I'm going to erase this. I tend to erase by hitting Control A, which means I'm selecting everything. And then I tend to hit backspace. So I erase everything on that layer. And then again, since I'm, it's, I essentially made a selection, Control D. So again, if you make marks on your screen, you don't want to, I want to get rid of all of it. Control A, select everything. Backspace, which again is delete if you have layers, and then Control D if you don't want your selection. You could go in there with the eraser tool, to be completely honest, but if you're erasing everything, it takes longer. 
Plus, I tend to do a lot of digital painting where my eraser might even have opacity stuff on it, and I don't want to mess with it. So I find it easier just to select everything and just erase. Um, so um, those we won't be using in this particular project unless you want to, but I'm just pointing out that's kind of why my workflow is the way it is. Okay. Other things that can assist you um, with this particular project. Um, Piet Mordrian did a lot of more, um, more um, very formulaic um, style things that are very um, situated in, like I said, like grids or horizontal and vertical patterns. Um, you can pull up a ruler by default in Photoshop by hitting Control R. Or you can go, I think it's under Windows. Again, I don't, again, I've, I've used Quickie so much, I've forgotten where things are at in the little menu drop downs. That's under View, I think, actually. I'm sorry. Under View, Rulers. So hit Control R or go to View Rulers and it'll open the rulers. Now, the rulers might be in some other format. I don't know what the, de I can't remember what the default is. Mine's currently in pixels because I do mostly work for, for uh, digital. Uh, not print, um, but you can change this by right-clicking on the rulers and then changing them to whatever you need. Um, for this particular assignment, it doesn't really matter as long as you know what you want. Um, you can do pixels, inches, centimeters, and so on as you go. Now, what rulers allow you to do is obviously create a rule. If you've used other programs that have rulers, they kind of behave all the same way. Um, in this case, um, in Photoshop, what you do to create a ruler is you click and hold on the ruler bar up here, and you again left click and hold. I'm dragging this down, and I'm, it kind of has these nice little guide marks here that tells you uh, what the, where it's going to be dragged to. It also will will snap, um, snap if you hold down shift a little bit more. It snaps and depending, depending on what kind of ruler you have, inches or pixels or whatever, it will snap based on whole numbers of that increment. If you hold down shift, so you can see I've created a ruler. It's just a blue line to help you. Now, what you will do with this is it will create um, kind of a something uh, uh, that, that Photoshop will want to snap to, which should make certain things easier. So, for example, if I come in here and make a square, and this this ruler is not on any, on any one layer, so if I, but if I come on this layer here and let's say I just fill it with a square, um, and again. And marquee, draw box, shift, shift backspace to fill. You know, bring up the fill command. I'm hitting color. Told you to do select V key to move. Again, again, I'm throwing at this point a lot of quickies at you. Hopefully, you know, um, you're okay with those. Um, if not, like I said, it, it can you can go through the menu. It's just it's going to take a lot longer. Um, and again, those are found. Um, oh. Actually, I don't even know anymore. V keys, you know, just click in here. M key is this one. Uh, deselect is select, deselect. Um, so there's a lot of them up there. It, just, it takes a long time to, to go through all those. So anyway, um, if, if I use the move uh, tool, V key, and drag this around, you'll see as I start getting closer to the layer, when you see those pink lines, it's trying to automatically snap to something. In this case, 50%. I keep going, keep going. I'll probably do vertical as well. There we go. So that basically is now it's trying to snap that bottom right corner into the both the the horizontal center and the vertical center there. But the blue line, the light blue lines again, the rulers will also snap. You see, it's it kind of has this tolerance down. This you know, it start getting close to it and then say, oh, you're getting real close to this guideline. It will snap it um, like that. And you know, it would work the same way from the top as well. Would try to it would try to snap it um if it's not uh something you want anymore let's say you don't want the ruler anymore it's like oh this is getting in my way you could hide them i'm not going to talk about that in this lecture but let's just talk about how to get rid of them um if you do on the move tool and you click you can actually grab these rulers you can move them around and if you drag them all the way back up into the the area where you know you dragged from the first time to create them it'll get rid of them um, there's other ways too. I think you can go into a view, clear guides, stuff like that. Yeah, clear. I don't have any guides anymore because um, I got rid of it. But you can also do that. So you can drag these left and right and use those. Now that is completely optional, but again, I do recommend it um, for if you want trying to keep, for example, spacing 
um, a certain set amount of your, your choice. You can totally do that. Now, the other thing where you know uh, here is again, we're really focused. This is the first half. We're really focusing on right now, at least this half, focusing on making making the shape. You know, manipulating the shape. Um, you know, understanding how to you know scale it up or down, uh, rotate it if need be, uh, rulers and those things. The second half is going to be uh, layers. Um, layers technically are not needed for this assignment, but it would be much harder to do this assembly without layers. Um, for example, back to my 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 where I made up a you know a line. This is pretty thick in my opinion, but let's say I make this thick black line here, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag these beyond. You can see I'm extended beyond the scope of the 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 border here, and I'm going to hit a return. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this object and rotate it. It's it's much easier. I mean, I could come in here and obviously try to do this, but then it might not be a different size. If I want this to be the same size, it's easier to just duplicate it. So to duplicate a layer in Photoshop, again, this is another one of those things, it's, there's tons of different ways of doing it. Um, you can select a layer and click on the little dotted lines here, go duplicate layer. Um, you go up through the top menu as well. There's a layer option here, duplicate layer. But let me show you the pro tip that I like to do. Um, and a lot of people, you know, like, huh, when they first hear this, but it's actually really easy. Just hold down the Alt key and try clicking and holding on this layer and drag it a little bit. So if I hold on the Alt key and drag this layer a little bit, it's kind of like moving the layer, but it's also making a copy. So again, I'm holding down Alt, and I'm just dragging the layer down a little bit, and you can see it. Well, it kind of, kind of, I kind of, it won't turn back, but you can see that now there's a little black arrow and a little white arrow. That means it's going to make a copy of it. It's going to make a copy of it right there. I'll do it again. So you can see, I got the layer selected. Hold down Alt. Nothing, nothing, not, nothing. Because I'm not clicking on the mouse yet. Holding down the Alt key though. So as soon as I click on the mouse and hold, or dragging. And turns those two little arrows and makes a copy. And I let go. And you can see I now have a copy. You don't you don't see it here because the two layers are in the exact same spot. But I have two layers over here that you can now go into and change. So if I want to, I'm gonna hit the V key, move tool, and just drag and move this. Now that we have multiple layers, I have to start talking about all kinds of, of quick key, more quick keys that could potentially help you move things around. And that's what this assignment is. The PA margin on assignment isn't that hard, but it's a, you're being hit with a lot of, you know, quick keys here. So, you know, we're trying to do something simple and master the, the fundamentals of navigation in Photoshop. Um, first off is, let me move this down for an example here. First off, if I click and drag this, and I'm dragging left and right, you can see, oh, it's moving up and down. I'm trying to drag it straight. If you hold down shift when you start dragging, it will lock whichever way you start dragging first. So in this case, I start dragging horizontally, it will it will be locked. I can't, once I started going, dragging left and right, I cannot go up and down anymore. Of course, if I let go of shift, I start dragging up and down again, it will, it will go up and down. It's just while that's there, I can't do it. And the same is true for up and down. If I hold down shift and start dragging initially up or down, I can't go left and right now, as long as I'm holding down shift and dragging. I, I would let go of map the mouse key and then uh, click again, and then I would be able to drag in the other direction, but it locks it. So if you need to do a row of squares, for example, you can do that. So if I hit, you know, if I was trying to make, let's say, you know, I'm ruining my previous example, making this one, but that's part of the process, I guess. If I were to move this, um, and more pro tips, you don't have to be over here to do that, that, that trick I showed you. So if I hold on Alt and move it over here, it works too. So if I'm holding down Shift, oh, I'm doing it, you can see I'm locking these, and it's creating these layers as I go. It's going to be a huge mess for you if you know, especially if you're like, oh my god. You know, you're creating all these layers. And yes, that is part of the process, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to 
hopefully, you know, confuse you too much. So you can do that alt trick, and that's what makes it so powerful in the layers or in the main window, if you're on, as long as you're on the move tool when you're doing this. Um, when, you're do, when you're doing it over here, you don't need to be on the move tool. But when you're doing it over here in the main view, you, I'm pretty sure you need to be on the move tool. There might be a, a few cases where it doesn't. Anyway, so back to our previous example. So we can hold down shift to lock it. We can hold down alt to make copies. It, again, either in either view, either the layer view or in the main view. And then, as I said, as I was saying earlier, I have this line here, I hit control T. Remember, control T is our transform tool. Move our mouse to the, one of the outside corners and start clicking and holding. And again, I'm just gonna hold in shift while I do this. We can drag this. And you can see, oh, there's a line. That's awesome. Oh, but it's not, it's not long enough. Uh-oh, what are we gonna do? Well, in this case, uh, it's not that hard. Actually, thankfully, uh, this is we're not making it really bigger, like uniformly bigger. We're kind of stretching it, and this should not. I always use, even if I'm 99% sure, I always use the word should. This should not cause just, um, any problems with uh, um, res resin solution because we're stretching it. Um, if this was an image, that would be a different story. But these are just geometric shapes. But if I hover the mouse, you can see over this this far right one. And right now, if I click and hold, it's going to make it uniformly bigger. That's not what we want. Again, shift to, to non-uniformly change it. And I, I, I find it weird that they did that. Um, actually, it was a relatively recent change in Photoshop. I, don't, I think a lot of programs do it the opposite way now, that it's non-uniform, and you'll jump shift to make it uniform. Um, it was just, I don't know, I just found it strange. But that's, again, shift. You hold on to shift when you want it to be non-uniform. You can see I can stretch that all the way across. And if you want to go, again, beyond the edges here, that is absolutely fine. So you can see I have a horizontal shape here and a vertical shape. Now, Gabe Maldrian, um, they, he did use various line thickness in you know, some of his paintings. But you don't want them to be like, every line to be a different thickness. You know, you're more than welcome to explore having different thicknesses of lines. If I make a copy of this line, again, I'm holding down Alt, and then I'm also holding down Shift in this case, as I move this. If you want to, to explore different thicknesses of lines, that is fine. But my recommendation is not to use too many um, different ones. So maybe you might have a thicker line and a thinner line, you don't want to draw every line out uniquely. So it's it, because more than likely you're going to lose that 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 kind of more, it's gonna look more chaotic instead of planned for um for you know forethought there. So I recommend that you perhaps stick to um you know maybe maybe two you know one to three lines you know and then when you do your squares you know you know so stick to an obvious formula that you have chosen when you make this assignment so all i did was to thin up that line is i used the control t key and again held down shift the same way we extended this out but I held down shift to, to and dragged on the vertical part in this particular example to thin it out um and again hold down alt you're going to create a lot of layers at some point so you can see I'm going to drag in a layer here, control T to transform. Maybe I'll, and I'm holding down shift while I rotate this. Once again, move this. And it's okay that the lines um, go off the page. That's absolutely fine. It only adds a small amount of memory to, to the files. So it's not such a huge deal. Now you can also nudge these around. Um, as you can see, you can't really tell what I'm pushing, but you can see that it's being nudged around. I'm not using my mouse. You can nudge these around with the arrow keys on your keyboard. It'll move it by pixels, one pixel at a time. So you want you go, oh, I'm slightly off. You don't want to use the move tool. That's absolutely fine. You can use the arrows to move the nudge. That's what the term they use to nudge a selection that you um, either have, or in this case, if you don't have a selection of an entire layer. So again, the, again. Be mindful of your selections. If you don't don't need a selection, deselect. 
And if that's the case, then you'll be nudging layers. Uh, again, I'm a huge fan of my quick keys. This is, you're gonna get a lot of it. And again, if you only absorb like half of it, that's great. Shift arrows is a nudge in 10 degree, uh, 10 pixel increments. So if you need to go a little faster, you can do that. So all your arrow keys let you nudge in any direction you need. All right, more quick keys for you. So and I'm not, we're not even finished yet. I know you're like, oh my God. And if you're taking notes, uh, I understand. That's why I said we're recording this video so you can read, watch back and, 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 and see the, all these quick key shortcuts. Um, other quick keys which haven't can, can come up for me but could accidentally come up for you or you need um, before me is um, zooming in and out. Now there's a couple different ways of doing this. Um, I actually probably use one of the more archaic, archaic ways as I use control plus and minus. Uh, control plus zooms in, control minus zooms out. Um, and if you get so zoomed in where you can't see all the image, as it's shown here, if you hold on the space bar, hold on the space bar, you can pan your view. So if you need to see some other image, you want to zoom in, but you want to pan around, you can hold down space bar. So control minus to zoom back out, control plus to zoom in. Um, that's the one I use. It's not the only one, though. Um, but that's the one I tend to use. Okay. So you can see I've made some lines. Yay me. Um, I got some lines here. If I, you know, lose track of what is what here, you can always click on these little these little eyeballs to kind of, okay, that's this one, that's this one, that's this one, and that's this one. Now, it's really up to you. But as mentioned in the previous lectures, is I do recommend that you start file organization, or sorry, layer organization, file organization too. Layer organization as soon as you possibly can. Um, and we're already at that point. So I have these two thin layers here, and I don't want to merge these. I want to select these two layers, and I'm going to hit Control G. And again, that's grouping. You hit select two layers, and or more, and you hit Control G, you will group them together. And I'll put those in a group. Now, if you want to rename anything, layers or, or groups, it's done the same way, you can double click on the words. Now, this I find a little tricky for a lot of beginners because if you double click in the wrong place, you get a different setting, which it's a little unforgiving in that regards. What you need to do is double click exactly on the words. It can't be like in the middle of it. It has to be on the words. Double click on the words. And you'll it will turn bluish color, and then you can type whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to call this thin lines, I guess. My capital is on thin lines. All right, that's fine. Now I'm going to select these other two layers, these are which are the thicker lines, and then also hit Control G, make another group. And I'm going to double click on group one now here. I'm going to call it thick lines. And all groups do is their own organization method. I personally don't go in and start naming all my layers until I'm starting to work on final production. And honestly, um, unless I'm working in, with a team, I might not name my layers at all. It's definitely great practice to name your layers, don't get me wrong. It's just if you start merging layers, they, they get broken, um, names get broken. So I don't generally start off doing that. I, I tend to use groups more than layers. So I can now hide these whole groups as needed. And again, now that they're contained, maybe you know what, I can start messing with this and just, well now when I make copies of them, they're all contained in here and I'm not too worried about nudge, um, them being, you know, getting a lots of layers because I have groups to keep them organized. Now at some point, it's gonna get so busy here that it's kind of hard to find things. It's like, oh my God, I only got six layers, which is nothing, to be honest. But you're gonna get to the point where it's like, oh my God, this is too many. Remember, um, there's a couple good quick keys, or, or sorry, settings, I should say, that will go a long way, and quick keys, actually. Um, one is auto select when you're on the move tool. If you're on the move tool, when you have auto select on, if you have this option checked, Whenever you use the move tool, it will try to automatically grab whatever layer you click on. Now, sometimes it does get confused, but it does a pretty good job. So 
So for example, if I click here, and I start clicking and holding, um, it will automatically jump to that layer. I didn't have that layer selected, it automatically jumped to it. If I click on this layer, for example, it automatically jumps to that layer and tries to do that. So this is a this will be a very valuable tool with this assignment. Um, and other assignments, it might be more of a hindrance. So I usually check it off. Um, that's why I usually hit mine off. Now, there is a toggle for this while you're on the move tool. If you hold down control, you see I hold down control, it turns on auto select. I'm holding down control. Let go of control, turns it off. This is what I tend to do. But again, if you find you like, no, I love this tool and you don't want to constantly hold on the control key, that's fine. Just turn on auto select. So, all right, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and um, leave it on for the rest of this demo particularly. So if you see something, me grab something somehow, now you know how. So the other things that you really need to pay attention to in this particular uh, assignment is um, layer order. Now, I'm just going to create a new layer here, to just a brand new layer. It doesn't really matter where I'm at, but I'm, I'm going to click outside the group because I don't want to make it in the group. You know what? I'll make it in the group just to show you how to take it out. So I'm going to hit Control Shift N to make a layer, and it's going to say, "Oh, you want to make a new layer? Hit Layer Two, hit OK, and it creates it in this 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 spot, this hit this spot here. I, my thick lines. Now my lines don't really matter, um, but if I come in here and make this square, again I'm going to make a perfect square holding down Shift. And this my my example here is not going to be a, the greatest. Um, representation of this assignment. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, so I'm going to make a square. I'm just going to pick a random color. I'm going to use my color box. And again, if you don't see any of these any of these windows, again, go to the windows, layers, obviously. I said that one a long time ago, right there. And color, right there. They also have quick keys by default, F6 and F7. Which even I don't use too much. Because um, I always have them open. All right, so I'm going to select an, another color in here, and I'm going to go with something obnoxious. I'll just pick the most vibrant red I can. And again, uh, the color box, how this works, this is a hue cube, uh, meaning it uses um, brightness, and um, brightness is white to black. It's vertical. Uh, chroma, or uh, saturation, is left to right. So the most brightest colors, most colors, are going to be the top right. You know, black across the bottom, and then you kind of get dollars. You get left, and then you have the hue as a slider on on the right hand right hand side. So I'm gonna do a noxious red here, and do fill foreground. There you go. I have a red square. If I Control D, just to show you guys, this this particular square is currently underneath, or sorry, it's above um, the thick lines, but it's below the thin lines. So as I move this, just I deselect it and grab, hit the V key. As I move this, you can see it's under the thin lines, but it's above the thick lines. Now, if that's the behavior you want, that's fine. Um, generally, I, I personally find it easier if you just do the lines on top of everything, but you're more than welcome to do this any way you want. So if I want this to be moved, again, I can just click and hold in the layers, and it matters where you drag to. So in this case, I'm just going to minimize the thin lines so we have more space. I'm going to click and drag this layer all the way to the bottom. I should say all the way, above layer zero. Right there, we see that double blue line there, and let go. And now you can see it's outside that group. I'm going to hide that group, or, or collapse that group. Now you can see it's below the thick and thin lines, and as I move this around, it is there. So again, I can come in here and maybe Make a copy, you know, move this around, use my arrow keys to nudge this. Obviously, I think my arrow is a little off. I have auto select on, so maybe what I'll do, I'm just kind of thinking about, um, you know, this kind of now. All right, I'm going to go make a copy of this. So I'm going to select this layer, you know, or I can just click on it with auto select on, hold down Alt and drag, and you can see I can make a copy of it. And I'm using my arrow nudges here. And then you know, okay, I need to select this square, nudge this up, air, arrows, select this square. I'm just clicking, left clicking, select this square, and you can kind of see. Maybe I'll bring this up further. And again, you can see as I started dragging, it started sliding. Maybe you know what? I'll I'll arrow nudge this. Oops, gotta click on it. 
you know, like, all right, I want to bring it up a lot. It's going to take too long to nudge. I can use shift rack, shift arrow, sorry, of course. It still takes a while. I'm going to hold down shift, and I'm on the move tool. I'm going to drag it up, and I have the wrong thing selected. So undo. What happened is this is why I don't use the auto select function. I accidentally grabbed the background layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one layer. Now hold down shift and move. There we go. So you can see I dragged that up. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one. You can see I kind of have something like that. So you can see, uh, I mean, we can make whatever we wish with this. But the real big takeaways here is you really need to focus on layer management. And you need to focus on your creation of your objects. And that, I, that can be tricky. So, um, yeah, that's the two things you can you, you need to focus on most. Um, everything beyond this point would be just more um, more tips and tricks, um, which I will show you a few more here that I think you guys can use. Um, just again, I don't. Want, I mean, I probably already overloaded you guys with too much, um, but I, you know, for those that have no Photoshop experience, but I feel like a few more of these tips and tricks might make your lives easier. Uh, for example. Um, and again, I'm just, you know, spitballing, you know, best case scenario, like case scenarios that might, might serve as interest to you. So let's say I want one of these squares to be the exact same size. You know, I'm going to drag a copy of it and I keep doing um, multiple copies of it for some reason. There we go. So let's say I, for whatever reason, I want this square to be, um, and you can see it's automatically trying to snap too, which is great. I made a couple copies of these squares here. Let's say I want this this square to be a different color. So I clicked on it to select it. Um, and then I want it to be that size. I could go in and measure it and whatnot and, and find it. But honestly, that's not worth my time. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change its color. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to one of the, one of the early um, color to editing tools which is hue saturation. And I accidentally, so I usually don't convert the background. I accidentally, I want to make the background bigger. There's a solution. There we go. Background bigger. I just selected the white. I keep accidentally making it smaller. And as you can see as well, what I also recommend that you do, you can also lock a layer um, as you zoom in and see if you see mistakes. And again, hopefully you remember, I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked because uh, I had a problem, which is good because you get to see it. I was accidentally moving this layer. I just made it massive, and then I'm going to lock it right here. Click the little lock. There we go. All right. This is why I don't use auto select. Okay. There we go. So anyway, back to my, my example here. Oh, I know what I'm doing. There we go. Finally got it. Kept missing it. All right. So anyway, back to this one here. If I want to change the color of this one, um, if I hit Control U, which is hue saturation, image adjustments, hue saturation, if you want to go through the menu. But again, my quick key is Control U. Um, that's the default one. It will bring up a... Uh, dialog called hue saturation. Uh, hue saturation is similar to what I described over here. You can change the brightness or the lightness. You can change the saturation. In this case I can't really get any more saturated because I went really high on the saturation. So I'll tone it down. Or I can change the color. Maybe I'll leave the saturation font alone. Maybe I'll leave the, the lightness alone too. Maybe I'll just change the hue slightly. So maybe I'll make it orange. Something like that. You know, maybe I'm gonna play with orange and red. Maybe I'll delete this one. And then uh, delete. It's, it's backspace when you want to use the eraser delete to erase things, but it's the delete key when you want to delete a layer. I know, confusing. Or you can drag the layer obviously into the trash can. I'm gonna copy this layer now instead. There you go. So if you wanted to make something a different color but didn't want to mess with the size, 
I thought that would be a great one to show you because it's, you know, it's much easier to control you to change its color. Again, I don't recommend a whole bunch of color, every square being a different color. So as I, as my example here, you saw, um, I changed the color of one of them. And then because now I didn't want to do the same one, you know, um, I just moved it. Now, if you somehow, um, let's say you make a bunch of them and you try to change the colors, there's a couple things you can do um, besides just writing down the number and, and changing it each time. Uh, you could merge those layers together, then do a hue, um, um, hue on them. Again, to merge layers is select those layers in question by hold, clicking on one, holding down shift or control to click and then selecting on the other one and then control E. That will merge those layers. That way again, if, now if I change these colors again, Control U. You can see I can just change these colors and they're, they're connected. These are, there is ways to break this back apart. Um, the easiest way would be to cut and paste it, i.e. make a selection, cut something, paste it. Um, I don't recommend that um, in this case, just because, you know, you know, just, you know, now you're getting, if you have a lot of little pieces, then it's going to be a lot of work. Um, but, I mean, you don't need to really merge things when you, you feel that they are more closer to finalized if you'd like to. Um, otherwise, I would avoid doing it. Um, the other thing you can do is, uh, here. that's kind of again more of a pro tip, I'll make a copy here, why not? Is let's say I hit control U to change a color of something and I make it blue. And I, you, we say we have much more layers here. If this is the last thing you did, and you go select select something, and again, you, uh, I changed that purple to a blue. If you hold, um, do hold down Alt when you you repeat any sort of editing tool, so in this case, Alt Control U, it'll repeat it with the exact same values. That's all. But that's a very very minor tip. But I mean, hey, for those of you students that have are more intermediate. This is something that might be useful to you. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, because yeah, if you hold down Alt, when you do any sort of um, adjustment, it will use whatever the last settings that you used in there. So if, again, if you had a bunch of layers that did this, you can go through each layer and just hit Control Alt U, Control Alt U, Control Alt U, Control Alt U, and then you, it would be, it would, it would apply the same thing to them. You don't have to sit there and type in the numbers every, every time. Um, so that's that's valuable, I think. I find that valuable as well. So there, there you go. Um, so with this, you can probably get well on your way. Um, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I know you guys are under problems, and so we'll do our best to answer those as we as we go, and then we'll continue um, this, you know, any um, follow up um, tips and tricks in a uh, future lecture as well. So until next time, um, and then we'll keep going.